This is literally a party tray. I love how everything here is just completely fast, furious, loud action. Woo. Okay, let's go right off the grill in the fire. The live octopus. I cannot wait to start digging into that sashimi. Today we're going on an ultimate Korean street food tour to eat some of the best local food in Busan. This is by far the sweatiest Korean meal I've ever had. Starting right here at Chagalchi Market, which is the biggest seafood market in all of South Korea. Huge fresh catch of the day, dried seafood. I mean, you could buy everything at this market and it's just a, a wonderland of seafood. And right now we're just on the outside kind of sprawling section of the market. But this market just goes on, goes on and on. And there's a huge indoor section as well that we are making our way towards. Oh, look at these giant cuttlefish. But they also have a huge official section of the Jagalchi market, which is right here behind me. Uh, it almost looks like a, like a train station. It's so big. And we're gonna step inside there to continue with the seafood tour. It's just a sprawl of aquariums of all things from the sea that you can possibly imagine and more. The plan here is to walk around to check out some of the seafood to see what's local and fresh and seasonal. Then we buy some seafood at the seafood market. From there, they have restaurants, which you can go to where they will cook the fresh catch that you bought, cook it fresh, ultra fresh, and you can eat right here at the market. Whoa. <laughs> so we met up with market stall owner. He's gonna be our host for the day at the, at the seafood market. And he has a stall selling fresh seafood, but he also has a restaurant upstairs. So he's gonna help us navigate, help us get some of the seafood. Uh, immediately, one of the things that's in season that's a local delicacy is called chono, which is, uh, I think it's a spotted sardine. Uh, it is very seasonal, only, only in season right now during this month that we're here. So he immediately darted out to the truck to get it fresh from the truck. So this is the process where they take it live and then they put it into the... Okay, okay, from the truck to the basket to the tanks. And this is live, fresh freshly cut right off the boat from the truck. This one, oh, like a, looks like a snapper. A sea bream, oh, okay. Oh, sea bream, oh, that's a good fish. That's a very good fish. Everything is as fresh, live as possible. Okay, so we're gonna go for that sea bream. What a beauty. Swift work of that sea bream. Oh man, a splatter to the lens, but he makes swift work of that sea bream. He's so fast. Uh, he knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, that goes from live and swimming in the tank to sashimi within seconds. And so clean, such a clean process. Whoa, it's squirting. Whoa, it's so slippery. Oh yeah, the live octopus. One of the things that he specializes in is everything is local, everything is seasonal seafood. Oh, he's sliding out. Oh. <laughs> and oh yes, he's... <laughs> the squirters, the sea squirts. Oh man, he just reached in and got one of the sea squirts, which are always hilarious. I mean, it kind of looks like a, like a pink hot dog. And he immediately, I have had this before in Seoul. Immediately grabs it from the tank, slices it up, pops it open, slices it up and says, wanna try some sashimi with it immediately? <laughs> okay, let's try it. Definitely, I have had this before a couple of times. Oh, it's so slippery. Oh, it almost feels like leather in your fingers. Give it another try in Busan. Mmm. Delicious. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's crunchy and sweet. Very good. And that's the freshest sea hot dog you'll ever have in your entire life. Literally seconds ago. Oh, very good. Very good. Oh, thank you. Okay. It's definitely a bit of a chewy texture. Okay. Okay. And kind of slimy at the same time. Oh, definitely slimy. That's kind of like a slimy piece of leather that you kind of chew on. He's 
doing a beautiful job with that plate of fresh sea bream sashimi. That is, oh man, the transparency, the color of that fish is beautiful. Those spotted sardines, that's just incredible. He cleans them so well, takes out the center bone, dries them, makes sure they're really dry with a towel, and then he just slices them finely, almost like a, like a slicing machine, so thin slices. Oh man, that's gonna be so good. And that's what we're gonna eat for, for sashimi. Oh, and he's doing a variety of techniques, some cross, some to the side, some julians. And well, I love all sorts of fish, but sometimes small fish are some of the tastiest, best fish uh, that you can possibly eat. So I'm, I'm really excited to try this. Oh, we're finished with all of the prep work. We're heading upstairs for the meal. Oh, and you can see there's all just kind of like food court stalls. It's almost a, a seafood, sea market, aquarium food court. Okay, and she's getting started on the abalone. Oh, and for the abalone, we're getting them grilled, right? Grilled abalone. Oh man, she does it so fast and just scores the abalone perfectly. Oh, ready. The abalone are gonna be sauteed down with some butter. Oh, nice. Come on, Here we are beginning this Busan food tour. Ultra fresh seafood. I cannot wait to start digging into that sashimi. And look at the way he made this floral formation of the sashimi, of the bream. Oh, transparent slices, so white. Transparent, actually. And then it is called hui, which is the, the raw, raw form of fish or raw form of, of ingredients. Um, this would be the, the bean sauce that you could dip into with garlic. Looks like there's some green chilies in there as well. Maybe a little dab in this. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fresh. The texture, the muscle, it melts in your mouth and it has a little bit of chew at the same time. What a just ultra clean fish. I mean, I do love sea bream. That is delicious. And dipped with that bean paste, that gives it that, that burst of saltiness, umami, garlic, fresh garlic, fresh chilies. Wow, that's good. And we also have the, the seasonal specialty, which are the, the spotted sardines, a delicacy. And he sliced it three different ways. Let's try the cross section first. Because it has little bones in it, it has this little bit of a crunch to it. But the way you sliced it, you can just crunch through the bones, giving it extra texture. Almost has a little buttery feel to it with that crunch. Oh, that's so good. I'll add some soy sauce to the wasabi. Let's try another slice, maybe this, this larger slice. And for this piece, I think I'll dip it into the soy sauce and wasabi. Mm. Even the way he slices it gives it a different texture. That one even has more of a crunch to it. I think you got more of a cross section of that bone structure, but it goes down so easily. I love the texture. That diversity of buttery fish plus crunchy bone all together. And then he gave us an octopus to try. This is the famous Korean nakji, which is the, the octopus, which is then just completely sliced up. Oh yeah, wait, let me grab a little. Oh yeah, oh the little suction, mm. the texture. It's a little bit slimy, a little bit chewy. I love the flavor of the sesame oil. Okay, for the next bite of sashimi, I'm gonna do a Korean style wrap. So you take a piece of lettuce, take a massive perilla leaf, then we go garlic, raw garlic, dip into the, the bean paste, into the center, and then a piece of the, the bream, and I think that's good. Wrap it up. Mm. Oh, that combination. The licorice flavor of the perilla leaf. Oh, that garlic is great. The licorice flavor of the perilla leaf goes so well together with that raw fish. Oh man. What another just incredible combination in your mouth. Next up, I'm gonna try the grilled spotted sardine, or actually she fried them in oil. Kind of shallow fried them so they're crispy on the outside. Oh man, and if you look inside that fish, you can see how buttery, how oily it is.
the texture, the fattiness of it, the oils, the fish oils, oh, it's so good. Just totally melts in your mouth and the skin is crispy from being fried in that oil. I think they made this from the head. This is our Seabream head and the bones. They made a soup, which also comes with your meal. You can see the bones in here. A lot of scallions in here. Oh, it smells really good, the garlic. Oh. So hot, sitting over the burner, like a hot pot of fish head soup. Mm. That's like one of the greatest usages of bones and head. Bring out that flavor. Then you get to nibble on the bones, get all of the meat off that you weren't able to get for the sashimi. And then it also just provides such a unique, delicious flavor because everything we have, we have a lot of sashimi, we have a lot of raw seafood. It's just so comforting to have a, a hot scallion bone soup. Mm. Salty, lots of scallions in there, really good. I'm gonna try next up the sauteed abalone. Oh, she kind of like scored it, but then she kept them whole. Sauteed them in a little bit of butter. Oh, wow. All oh, the freshness, the texture of that, it's not rubbery at all. So soft and tender, sweet. Oh man, that's good. I'm gonna circle back around to the chono hui, the sashimi spotted. Gotta go with the garlic. Load it up with that bean sauce with the, the green chilies, the garlic slices. And again, the wrap. Mm. I love perilla leaves. Man, that flavor goes so well with fish. It's just a total match. Then with that fermented bean paste that gives it extra flavor, the pungency of the garlic. Oh, the green chili. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. The white kimchi, the grilled sardines. Mm -hmm. Awesome meal. Oh man, that's buttery. That was an incredible seafood meal in Busan. And now that we're leaving, it's pretty full. Lots and lots of people. I mean, this is where you come for an ultimate seafood feast. We're gonna continue eating. We have another place to eat that's actually at the fish market. And it's extremely popular locally, but it's not seafood at all. The next place we're going is down this alley. Look at that, there's so many signs on this alley. So many colors. Okay. Oh wow, this place is incredible. And like I was mentioning, it's one of the most popular places to eat in the entire fish market area. And that's especially for local people selling fish. I mean, when you sell fish, when you work with fish, when you work with seafood, all your day in, day night, I mean, sometimes the last thing you wanna do is eat seafood. And so this is a famous place for old school for their uh, intestines barbecue as well as their tripe hot pot. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, we have aprons. Oh, oh, no doubt. No doubt I'm gonna put on the apron. Yes. <laughs> okay, so tripe hot pot intestines barbecue. This place has been here since 1952. Extremely popular. I love this style. It's just straight up bar counter seating. They cook the griddles in front of you. All the banchan are already laid out on the, and the condiments. I can't wait to see. Oh, she's slicing up some tripe in the back there. She has some massive like blankets of tripe. This is such a cool experience. <laughs> Whoa. That's the intestine? Wow, that's a whole coil. 
Oh, and on the grill, now with the griddle, we have the heart. Okay, the heart goes on. The origin of this place, like uh, the roots come back all the way from the Korean War. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's, this is all one restaurant? Or yeah, they, all, is it is it different stalls all within one it's restaurant? It's all different stalls within oh, one restaurant. Okay. Yeah. It's almost like a food court. Exactly. It's, it's a almost food like a whole food court yeah. of intestines. And Auntie said that she's the fourth generation cooking intestines here. So much history. Gotta try the beef heart. Beef heart is ready first. She said to eat it immediately. You dip it into this sauce with garlic. Oh. No, I want that garlic. Okay. Then you eat it with some of the salad and you eat it with some of the oh some of the salad okay first bite mm. oh wow the texture is incredible and so much flavor next course is the the first layer of the the stomach auntie did did tell me that i over sauced on my first bite I added a bit too much sauce, so this time she said just a little dip to really taste the flavor of the, the stomach. Oh, wow. That texture. It like springs back at you. <laughs> it jumps in your mouth a little bit. Oh, that's a little rubbery, but really <laughs> unique texture. Mmm. Flavor keeps on coming. A little bit chewy, definitely, but good. Okay, another heart. This time I might go in for some of those green chilies. Man, the heart is so good, so sweet. And as we were eating that, she brought over the hot plate of the intestines that have been sizzling in their own fat. Oh man, they're squirting. Oh, so oily. Oh, oh, so it's first griddle fried and then onto the hot grill. So it's a two-step cooking process. Oh, it squirts and sprays. Okay, and we're moving into the, the small intestines. This is when things are really getting excited, the, the intestines. Well, intestines are always just slightly hilarious and delicious delicacy. And I mean, just the way they look and the way they're so fatty, they're just spewing with juices and as she adds it to the fire, they just erupt with flame. Another dip into the sauce. Wow. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Almost has a nutty creaminess to it with a chewy wrapper and the smokiness grilled in its own fat on the griddle, then the smokiness from the grill to char off all of that excess oil and grease intestines is fantastic. Yes. And then they also, we also have those, they look like sausages, but they're the big intestines. Sometimes I've heard them called flour intestines because when you chop them open, they just kind of spew with fat and juices into a floral, floral crystals almost. And then we got the garlic in the intestines fat. Oh, wow. And the intestines taste like so clean. They're not ironing at all, just like nutty. This bite of intestines is to go into the, the sesame oil garlic, she said. Oh. Nutty intestines, nutty sesame oil. Oh, it's so good. Chase with some of the salad. Mm. And then we also have a kimchi here. Oh, there's radish in it too. So there might be radish water in this kimchi as well. Mm. That's really refreshing. That's gonna cleanse you from all the, the oily bits and parts. Okay, here we go. Let's try the flour intestine. Oh, that's like fat on fire. <laughs> oh, that totally melts in your mouth. Oh man, it liquefies. And then with that kind of stretchy skin around it, flour fat on the inside just totally dissolves on your tongue. Wow, you need to chase that with kimchi. That's without a doubt because it's so rich. Mm. Oh man, and then with that fire, and it's amazingly neutral tasting, just fat. Mm. Wow, 
<웃음> 물별로 씹는 식감이 달라서 개인적으로 좋아하는 부위가 나와요. 언어 부위가 괜찮아요. So each individual part has uh -huh. different textures and feeling. So Definitely. Asking, like, what is your favorite like uh, part so far? Oh, I really like the the small intestine. Ah, 곱창이 제일 맛있어요. I'm gonna go for the small intestines. I think the small intestine is my highlight. That's my favorite. Dip it. Oh, that's hot. Okay, I want to taste it with a chili. I think you can dip the chili in the bean paste. I get. I'm going to Oh, yeah. That went up the nose a little bit. Oh, it's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That is so rich. You almost immediately have to taste it with kimchi to cut that grease. Wow, it's tasty though. It's calorie rich. So they use the first layer, the yang, and then mix it with a lot of cheese. Gochujang? Yes. Is there rice already in there? Uh, no. No rice yet. Okay. As we continue snacking on all the organs, some carbs would be nice, and they have the perfect solution. So these are all of the, that in that tripe, the tripe or the intestine, the remaining tripe or some of the, that first stomach with sauces and gochujang and lots of onions that they sizzled on the hot griddle until cooked. And now they're just slicing it into tiny bite-sized pieces with scissors, scissor cut. Oh, and here comes the rice. Oh, wow. Oh, what a move. Very hot. Very hot? <laughs> Careful when you put it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that is rich and flavorful. The rice has just absorbed everything, just stretching the flavor with little chewy bits of tripe in it as well. The onion. Oh, that's on fire still too. Oh, what a move to make use of all of the juices, all of the oils, everything, and to complete your meal. So good. That intestines rice might be my favorite part of the entire experience. It's so good. All the oils from the intestines seeped out. Just completely absorbed into every single grain of rice with gochujang, with onions, wrapped in seaweed. Oh, it's so tasty. Wow. And finally, at the end of your meal, you're going to, want to take a drink of that kimchi water. I just wash it all down, just cleanse it, cleanse it going down. Oh, that was satisfying. That was a, a textural playground in your mouth. And I just absolutely love the history here and the culture. Next up on this food tour of Busan, we drove a little bit outside of town, about 15, 20 minutes, and we are at a legendary place to eat one of the signature noodles that originates right here in Busan. I love Korean noodles. I'm very excited. Okay, nice. We got the, the floor seating here in the back. Oh, I love it. And we came here specifically. I mean, this entire restaurant specializes in something called milmyeon, which is uh, Busan's special noodle. Man, you step in here, you can immediately smell the aroma of beef. Like, there's just beef bones filling the air. And another thing is that they gave you water, and I think, oh, it is hot. This is the broth in a tea kettle. You can start with the broth. You got mine? Oh, it smells so good and warm. Oh, oh yes. 
감사합니다. This is a beautiful noodle dish, and you can see that the noodles are yellow in color. They're made from wheat flour, and two different versions. Uh, one is that I think the original one is with ice water soup, which I have grown to absolutely love. Ice water Korean noodles. And not just water, but I mean, that's like a broth. That's like a broth. It could be mixed with other things as well. Sometimes could be radish and kimchi water inside of it. Um, and then you can see pieces of beef, the ball of wheat noodles. There's uh, slices of cucumber, some definitely some uh, radish on there, gochujang, and an egg. And then the other one is just called the bibim uh, milmian, which is the, the same noodle, but without the broth. Oh man, but we got to start with that broth. So actually, they don't serve you any spoons. There were no spoons in the in the little little case. So I think you're supposed to drink the broth. Oh. Oh. Oh wow, the initial first taste is a little bit sweet. Not too salty. And then you get this slushy, this like beefy slushy in your mouth all at the same time. Oh, that's so refreshing. Oh, I love it. So you're gonna mix it up first. Mix up the the ball of noodles. Oh, that's a it's a nice, tight wad of noodles. And you can see all that gochujang mixing into the icy broth, cucumbers, daikon radish, pieces of slices of beef, ice. Let's try those noodles. The texture of those noodles is incredible. Slightly chewy. So clean, so pure tasting. The sweetness from the gochujang, the icy coldness, the beefiness. Man, those are quality noodles. You can taste that they're just like real deal handmade noodles. I love that. And actually before I do, there, there are some seasonings that you're supposed to add, but before I do that, I'm gonna mix up the bibim because I've already learned a lesson. When you eat two bowls of noodles, you wanna mix them up fast because if you wait too long to mix it up, it will get too hard to mix it up and kind of like dry it out. So you want to mix it up now. Let's do it. The mix. Oh, I love how they make such a tight wad of noodles. The sesame seeds. Definitely an art to, to the bibim in Korea. Stirring things up and mixing them evenly, coating them all evenly with the sauce. While we're at it, let's go ahead and try this. That's a huge tangle of noodles. Mm-hmm. I love the quality and texture of the noodles. This one, you can taste more of the sweetness from the gochujang and a really nice sesame oil flavor as well. Okay, but after tasting that, I'm gonna move back over to the icy noodles and season. So you do one swirl of vinegar, one swirl of the kind of like a horseradish dressing, and then you stir that around. That's gonna slightly alter the flavor of the broth, give it a little bit more of a bite. Actually, let me try that broth. Oh, yes, I love it with that extra bite of that, that horseradishy bite that just kind of, just gives it a little bit more of a kick. Mm. Mm -hmm. So refreshing. I like them both, but I really like the one with the icy water and then really good shreds of Shreds of beef, radish, julienne cucumbers, all with those tangly, chewy noodles. Let's try that egg. That was excellent. I especially, again, love the one with the icy cold noodles, the slushy. Uh, from here, we are heading back to the center of Busan, where we're gonna go to another market and try some street food snacks. We are at Gukje Shijang Market. This is one of the extremely popular market areas and actually connected, I mean, basically this whole central area of Busan is a market connected to the fish market where we are at this morning. Uh, but it's, there's a lot of things you could buy here, lots of, fashion accessories, but there is some street food to be found, including a couple of famous things that we got to try when we're here. 
yeah, it's called Busan. So another one of the popular street foods that you have to try when you come to Busan is called Busan Omuk. And they have some really packed stalls in the center of the market. And then we found this stall where she has a nice selection of the, it's fish cake, boiling on sticks. And it's, what's awesome is it's self-service. You grab your own. Well, let's do it. For some of the sauce, there's sesame seeds. There's big scallions in here. I'm gonna put that sauce into my, my bowl. Okay, and then they have all the, all the skewers, giant skewer sticks. This one is, I think, the most classic, huge sheet of fish cake skewered boiling in the juice. Okay, dip. <laughs> oh, that looks extremely spongy. Oh yeah, mm. almost feels like fish tofu. A little bit, well, really spongy. It just absorbs all of that broth as it soaks, boils, remains hot. Nice texture. Huh. And then also probably one of the coolest moves of all, you grab a red cup and it's a scooper cup. Then you can just dip into that broth. Just no double dipping. A little bit salty, not overly powerful in flavor. Kind of mild, watery, salty, and just with that essence, that aroma of the fish broth. Okay, I'm going in for one more. I want a really hot one. Looks like a patty, a patty formation. So cool that they just give you freedom to grab your own stick, self-serve, just on a busy lane. Just reach, walk by, and reach by for a skewer. Oh, this one's really good. Mm. This one has a little more like scallions, carrots inside of it, or chili. Oh, this one is good. A little more of a spongy texture and uh, a little more flavor coming out of this one. Well, that's the Busan fish cake experience. Wonderful. We have a lot more to eat. There's an entire lane for something which is called bingsu, which you might have heard of. It's one of the most famous Korean desserts, a shaved ice, but with so many toppings. I think you'll find it around the world now. And so we're gonna try the, the original uh, Busan shaved ice bingsu. Nice, they still do it by hand. Crank that ice. Also, shaved ice, beans, Fruit. Oh, more ice gets shaved on. Condensed milk, that's condensed milk goes on. <laughs> oh, and more ice. Oh, the layering. Oh, and what's that? Go on top, some candied fruits. Oh, look at that, look at that texture of that ice though. Beautiful shavings. Okay. Kamsameda. And she does it so fast. Uh, just whipping together the ingredients, layering it together, adding on multiple layers of beans, candied canned fruits, uh, and beans and condensed milk. Really see the shavings of ice, really nicely shaved ice. It's not, it's not crushed, it's not uh, really fine, it's not snow, but it's like these beautiful shavings. Look at that texture. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that is refreshing. And I think of the joy of eating bingsu is that when it starts to melt, it starts to create these new flavors and mix all the ingredients together. You've got the texture of that ice, which is, it's shaved so fine that it has a little crunch, but as soon as you crunch down, it just melts, dissolves on your tongue. The beans are a little bit sweet and just act to, to, to bring it together. And then you've got that candied fruit and the condensed milk, which also just makes it milky. And you start to mash it up, it starts to get wetter melt with the ice, the juices flow. I love her texture of ice though. The bingsu was excellent, very refreshing, and just a simple, simple bingsu, which is what I enjoy. Okay, we're on our way to find another thing.
in order to make it, she takes a handful of the dough, which is quite sticky. Uh, she kind of presses it into a ball and then she puts in a spoonful of this cinnamon sugar mixture and then wraps it up to close it. Then she puts it onto the hot griddle, which there's oil in it, to shallow fry. Shallow fries it in the oil, smashes it down into a patty formation and then flips it over and cooks it until it's golden brown, until the, the sugar starts to melt on the inside. And then the really cool move is that once it's done and crispy, they make an incision into the top of it and load it up with a, a bunch of uh, crushed, I think, almonds and pumpkin seeds. Nuts, a variety of nuts on the inside, and then it's ready to eat a handheld pocket. That's a really, really cool idea. And, and serve it to you in a cup. Check this out. I mean, it was good. It was good already before the nuts, but when they open it up and load it full of nuts, it makes it even better. Oh, there's even, uh, I think, almonds. Pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, at least, maybe more. And that's hot, that's right out of the oil. Mm. Oh man, it's good. Crispy on the outside. The, the dough is really chewy, elastic y. You've got the sweetness of the sugar, which has been melted with the cinnamon, and then the crunch of the nuts, the nuttiness of it. Oh all coming together. Kind of like a donut pocket, but so good. Yeah, I'm not that much into sweets, but this is really good, especially since it's hot and fresh, prepared right in front of you. That was a great time. Definitely a place you want to get lost just walking around exploring all the shopping alleys and lots of street food tucked within. But from here, we've got another place that we're going to go that's also a big part of the food culture of Busan. We ended up driving probably a 15 minute drive or so from where we were uh, to a place called Amnan Park. And this is on the seaside. Actually, it's really popular for fishing. Almost everyone here is fishing, but it's also popular for these local Busan food tents. And that's what we came for. Oh, and this is the food section. Look at all the stalls. There's probably about a dozen or so seafood stalls, absolutely packed, people waiting outside. I love the environment. Um, and I mean, these are straight up seafood shacks next to the sea. We are in. Oh, it smells good. Oh, the seafood. Oh, it smells amazing in here. We are in, and this type of dining is called the pojang matcha. It's a part of the Busan Korean food culture. It's like this hot, steamy tent, and you feel all the heat coming from all the grills going, clouds of smoke rising as you grill up seafood. Um, and they're especially known for having some drinks, having some bites to eat, some snacks, some grilling some seafood, and for the, the loud environment. What, a, what an atmosphere. Okay, and here comes... Whoa, that looks like a plate of cheese or butter. Make sure you grab the cups. I love how everything here is just completely fast, furious, loud action. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, oh. oh, the appetizer plate, octopus. Oh, and some Swiss sea squirt, I think that is. Sea squirt. Mmm. Oh. Wow. That's a strong flavor. It's one of the most seafoody tasting things that you'll ever have. I have had it before, just straight, but that's with marinated in sesame oil. I think it's came down the seafoodiness a little bit. It's still very strong, very pungent. Almost bitter. The mussels have arrived. Some freshly steamed mussels. Oh, and clams down here too. Steamed with a broth. Onions in here, some chilies in here. Oh, I can't wait to try those. On the half shell. Loaded up with some of that soup. Oh, sweet. A little bit of onions and chilies in there. That broth is great. And then ultra fresh mussels. Let's try that clam.
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Again, ultra fresh. Piping hot. Whoa! And here's the main event. A whole tray. Wow. Oh wow. This is literally a party tray. I see spaghetti. I see hamburgers. I see shrimp. I see abalone all on this tray. And it's kind of like you, there's no real menu. You kind of just serve you. They have these set menus that you order. And we got the, definitely the party platter. Here comes the fire. Put it on. To the, to the edge, okay. Thank you. Okay, so that just needs to slowly simmer. Looks like there's chilies, onions, some kind of a yellow substance on top, and that just needs to slowly simmer on the fire. Oh, the, the scallops. All of them? Yep. Okay, so now we have the butter, the butter and the cheese tray. You take a blob, a block of butter, put one into, put one into each scallop, and then you add a little cheese. Yeah, you can try to cover it up with cheese, make it like a, Cover Ooh. it with cheese. Okay, cover it with cheese. Oh, oh yes, man. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Melted cheese and butter. Believe it or not, there is an order and a strategy and a method in which you grill, in which you uh, prepare all the seafood. And this is as like Korean, local, modern style as you can get. Oh man, with the butter, with the cheese, all the onions, and all these different trays of mixtures that you're gonna keep on feeding to your, wow, feeding to your grill. So you do wanna then mix this up. Oh, there's shrimp, oh, more cheese, more butter, onions. Mix this up so it starts to slow cook over that fire, starts to melt. This is like powerful fire cooking. Look at that scallop in the middle. It's already melting, we better move it out. Oh, that's a raging hot fire. It's a raging hot fire. Okay, I think this one is ready though. Cheese, onions, scallop has come off. Whew. Okay, let's go right off the grill in the fire. Oh, wow. The cheese is so mild, but you got the sweetness of the scallop. The onions, the green pepper in there, the fire. Oh, man. That is pretty tasty. And abalone goes on. Hey, look where they are. Okay, let's try it. This red, cheesy, shrimpy, just melting sauce. Molten lava cheese, it looks like. <laughs> Literally, it's molten hot lava cheese. Maybe with pepper paste and shrimp in the center. Tray of cheese goes on. Almost looks like the last tray of cheese. Grilled abalone is ready. Let me dip into that, that sauce. Oh, wow. That is so tender, so sweet. This shrimp here, I've been looking forward to it from the start. These are beautiful, beautiful. They're gonna be so sweet. Let's put them on. Oh, that's a lot of butter. Oh man, these shrimp. Beauties, the shrimp is ready. Oh man, that fire in the face. It is warm in here. <laughs> oh wow. That is by far the best bite of the meal. Oh, that melts in your mouth. Oh, it's so sweet and fresh. Shrimp is incredible. I'm putting on the burger. Spaghetti time. This is the finale. The sp spaghetti finish. 
I can cut it for you. Oh, it's okay. I think I got it. Sliced up that hamburg steak and it's ready into bite-sized pieces. Yeah, that's that's done. That's good to go. Oh. That is good. A little sweet. Totally caramelized. Crispy. Smoky. Now mix the spaghetti. Oh yes, there's butter. There's onions. There's shrimp. There's ham. Okay, time for the spaghetti. Seafood spaghetti, ham, Korean spaghetti. Oh, flaming hot spaghetti. Mm. That tastes kind of good. And guaranteed, this is the sweatiest, hottest Korean meal I've ever had in my life. Not only is it a dining room and a restaurant, it doubles as a sauna. You sweat it all out as you're eating. Oh wow, again that was the, the, by far the sweatiest Korean meal I've ever had. This is such a popular place, so local and yet so modern, so much cheese. But man, it's so smoky, so hot back there. Just feels great to be back in the fresh air. And what a day in Busan. Busan has so much character to it. People love, love to eat. And this is only scratching the surface. I mean, there's so much more to eat, but it's been an incredible time in Busan. And I'll have all the information in the description box everywhere we want. I wanna say a huge thank you to the Korea Tourism Organization for arranging our entire trip here and for setting everything up. Tomorrow we continue on to Daegu and then on up the east coast of Korea for more food. So stay tuned and thanks again for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos.